Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. It is Thursday, October 31st. Happy Halloween. Sound blessings. Uh, we are here to look at the new releases this week, genre by genre, and maybe appropriately on Thursdays, we look at fantasy and science fiction. Uh, quick announcements. I do have sprints tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. Bring your own book, work on a project, or just close your eyes and relax after a day. Uh, that is certainly your choice. It is time carved out for your self-care. So whatever it is that makes you happy, I'm just creating the time and space for it. Hi, Anita. How you doing? All right. We shall see during uh, sprints tonight if we get any door knockers. Last year, we didn't get any kids. Uh, this year, we might. There's some kids that moved in across the street. We shall see. The candy is not in the house until after work today for our own protection. I'm good, thanks, Helen. I'm doing okay. Getting closer to the weekend makes me happy. All right, we are here to look at the fantasy and science fiction. First up, Throne of Secrets by Carrie Maniscalco. Uh, second in the Prince of Sin series. I know she is an author who is popular with the younger booktubers. A wicked prince determined to save his kingdom. Gabriel Axton, infamous as the Prince of Gluttony, the self-proclaimed rake of rakes, has always lived for indulgence in delicious food, in tantalizing women, and most of all in the thrill of the hunt, where his love of danger can take over. But when his favorite adventure takes a deadly turn, he realizes something is very wrong in his demon court. With the clock ticking, he must turn to the only one who might uncover the truth, a journalist he has spent a decade avoiding a reporter hellbent on finding the truth. Adriana St. Lucent has been on the hunt for years. If she could just report something damning enough about that no good scoundrel, Gabriel Axton, she knows others would finally see the demon as she does, but she never expected to turn up a rumor too terrifying to be believed. Could the ice dragons to the North be growing restless? Drawn into the secrets of the underworld, Adriana's investigation leads her into the place she dreads most, Axton's infamous court. A dangerous rivalry and deliciously twisted fairy tale. To stop darkness from falling over their kingdom, Axton and Adriana will have to unite against an escalating danger. But with each holding tight to their own secrets, can they find the truth before it's too late? And what will they do with an equally troubling rumor that they may not actually hate one another after all? <clears throat> Warrior of Legend by Ken, Kinder, Kinder Blake, second in the Hero Maker series. The cost was steep, but Reed is officially an Aristine. And not just any Aristine, but a glorious death, guiding only those heroes whose glorious costs whose glory costs them their lives. It is a heavy burden, but to forget the prince she left behind, Reed throws herself into it, harvesting heroes at what some say is a reckless pace. So, I'm not dead yet. So when Leonine is summoned to guide a princess to a glorious marriage, Reed sees an opportunity, a hero who isn't fated to die, and they secretly arrange for Reed to go in her place. But instead of an easy mission, she arrives to find chaos. An old enemy is rising to threaten the Aristine, and one of the princess's suitors is Hestian, whom Reed still loves and who may yet love her. Reed has already given everything to the Order. Our, as oaths are broken and lives are lost, what more must she give to save her sisters and herself? The Bloodless Princes by Charlotte Bond. Bond, Charlotte Bond, second in the Fireborn Blade. 
A tale of honor dragons and a love that endures beyond death. Come for the journey through the underworld. Stay for the suspiciously familiar winged cat. After their dubiously successful quest to slay the White Lady and recover the Fireborn Blade, Sir Madela and Seraline set about changing their world for the better. But the cursed and newly promoted High Mage Seraline must visit the afterlife to ask a favor of the bloodless princes who run the underworld. But Seraline and Sir Madela will soon discover that the old tales only hold so much truth in them, though perhaps there's enough to make a start on their new journey. To escape the underworld alive, Seraline will need a lot more than just her wits, and Madela will need more than just her fireborn blade. For she is wrath. I feel like that some days. By Emily Varga. A sweeping Pakistani romantic fantasy reimagining the Count of Monte Cristo. 364 days. Framed for a crime she didn't commit, Dania, Dania counts down her days in prison until she can exact revenge on Mazin, the boy responsible, or Mazin, the boy responsible for her downfall, the boy she once loved and still can't forget. When she discovers a fellow prisoner may have the key to exacting that vengeance, a stolen gin treasure, they execute a daring escape together and search for the hidden treasure. Armed with dark magic and a new identity, Dania enacts a plan to bring down those who betrayed her and her family, even though Mazin stands in her way. But seeking revenge becomes a complicated game of cat and mouse, especially when an undeniable fire still burns between them and the power to destroy her enemies has a price. As Dania falls deeper into her web of traps and lies, she risks losing her humanity to her fight for vengeance and her heart to the only boy she's ever loved. Right there tells me this is geared for a younger audience perhaps boys this is the boy i love well no i fall in love with men uh end of row one bindle punk hefe a sequel by desideria mesa Prohibition is in full swing in the glamorous life of upper-class Kansas City as everything Rose, Luna, Lane ever hoped it would be. Being married to her best friend isn't so bad either, considering their agreement to keep their real love lives out of the public eye. However, try as she might to continue her life of anonymity, her popularity as a land developer's wife and as a successful club owner draws even more attention to her personal endeavors. Soon the balancing act between the life of Luna and Rose becomes a full-time job itself, making visiting home harder than ever before. However her, <clears throat> however, her haven, which once offered a place of acceptance, is growing more hostile. Her community of brujas criticizes her methods of using magic for economic and social gain while consorting with nefarious witches of the North. Meanwhile, the Pendergast machine is running at full force, pushing his will and money all over the city. Keeping her true identity and powers a secret while posing for the society papers gets all the more dangerous as new enemies start to question her origins and old ones creep up from the dark realms. The pressure could force Rose to do questionable things for the greater good, distancing herself from her loved ones and who she wants to be. She may have mastered her earth magic, but she still has a lot to learn about the heart. Jennifer Step has a new one. Good morning, Mary. Happy Thursday and happy Halloween. Just off the phone with the vet. Good news. Oh, good. He is, I has left mass is benign. Oh, yay. Good news indeed. He just says hi. And she says, very glad, Mary. I see some familiar. Yes, indeed. I waited till today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary says, thanks, Anita. She is healing well and gets her sutures out next week, and then we will be in the clear. Oh, what a relief. Absolutely. I'm also wearing my bow and knot cross, which is what you wear for protection on Samhain. 
Only Cold Depths, book four in the Galactic Bond series. Everyone knows the name Vesper Quill. I used to be a lowly lab rat working in a regal-owned corporation, but thanks to my true bond with Kyrian Calderon, I'm now one of the most wanted fugitives in the archipelago galaxy. Kyrian and I have spent the last few weeks avoiding bounty hunters along with the Arrows, the elite Imperium warriors, tasked with capturing us. Now we've journeyed to a distant planet that's supposed to be a refuge for true bonded couples, but when new en enemies appear, we're once again in grave danger. As a seer, inventor, and engineer, I'm skilled at figuring out how things work, but I can't quite understand my growing magic and newfound psionic abilities. The clock is ticking, and if I don't figure out how to tap into my power, I'll doom myself to a gruesome fate, along with Kyrian. Get much uh, trick or treaters. Last year we had zero. And a bowl full of candy. Another station by Kevin J. Anderson. Space is vast. Space is full of wonders. Space is terrifying. In the darkest part of the solar system lies a wormhole, nether. Astrophysicist Kami Skora has joined a research team up to the Nether Anomaly, the first team to investigate it in person to understand the mechanics of the wormhole and to explore its pos possibilities as a shortcut to Alpha Centauri. But another race of ancient beings has already been here an impossibly long time ago, leaving remnants of their vast complexes and the gigantic temples they built to horrific beings beyond comprehension. What dangers did those elder races find in the hid hidden corners of space-time? What did they unleash? And what remains? Now, Kami and the crew of Nether Station must find the answers before the darkest part of the cosmos swallows them up. Looks more like an eye than being swallowed up, but, you know, art. I don't get any live on a small country. Oh, with only two houses on it and no small children in the neighborhood. Don't mind that we don't get any. Keeps me from eating candy. Indeed. I mentioned in the beginning that uh, I did get some candy on Tuesday. But it's locked in my car. And will not come into the house until after work today. And then it goes to work tomorrow for the text. A Tribute of Fire by Soraya Wilson, book one in the Eye of the Goddess. I do like that cover. Leah is the princess of Locris, a dying desert nation cursed a century ago by an earth goddess, one still worshipped by the thriving and adversarial nation of Ilion. Every year, Ilion offers the goddess a sacrifice, two Locrian maidens forced to compete in a life and death race to reach her temple. In a millennium, no maiden has made it out of Ilion alive. This year, Leah is one of the hunted. An education in battle gives her a fighting chance, but the challenges are greater than she feared. Leah's beloved but untrained sister, Quinn, Quinn, I guess, creatively spelled Quinn, has been put in the path of danger. The winding streets of Ilion itself have been transformed into a labyrinthine maze of countless choices and dead ends. And if the risks weren't significant enough, Leah is reluctantly drawn to the commandingly, commandingly attractive Jason, an Ilionian sailor. Oh, they're throwing in words today. She loathes to trust and desires like no man before. The tribute game is on. It's up to Leah to lift the goddess's curse, restore Locris to its former glory, and change the fate of every young woman destined to follow in her path. Kyo. Kyo is, has been licking the floor, and now he's going like he has a hairball. It's his own ball. Don't lick the floor. But it tastes so good. Usurpation. Semiosis number three. 
by Sue Burke. Stevland, the dominant sentient life form of Pax, has clandestinely sent some of its progeny to Earth to explore, to spread, to report back. Since their germination, Earth has been a powder keg. Human rebellion, robot uprisings, and global pandemics have created chaos, destruction, and deaths. As more and more conflicts break out across Earth, Stedlin's children work in the background in an attempt to control human behavior and perhaps bring peace to the planet. Stedlin to control of Pax. Earth shouldn't be too difficult. Dot, 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 dot. Did any books follow you home from the library, Mary, the other day? Is that just yesterday? <laughs> it's been a long week. The Song of Imaru, Earth's Door by PJ Dudek, first in a potential series. But in some way, my goal is the same as your goal, noble and eternal. What you must understand is that without the darkness, he began to lift his file, a uh, fiery tumult swirled inside. There is no light. The vast plains of South Dakota offers Heron solace from both his dreams. Exotic land. I was ready to go blah, 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 but it's just South Dakota. Uh, from both his dreams of an unknown past and the rumblings of a new global war. Yet a haunting melody plays over the stillness of the grasslands, a melody he cannot escape, one that seems hungry to force him into, force him to remember. When a stranger dressed like a medieval traveler enters town, the already nervous community responds with alarm. Is this man there to cause trouble like the other newcomers, those who claim to be part of a government organization observing a new illness in the area? And how does this man know Terran when Terran has no recollection of him? As the threat of war draws closer and strange sightings appear in the sky, Terran begins to discover that all on the planet is not what it seems. What have his dreams been telling him? Is there more to the universe, to reality, than he could have ever imagined? Uh, it sounds like it. Last one today. This will be fun by E.B. Asher. Ten years ago, they saved the realm. It ruined their lives. Everyone in Mithria knows the story of how best friends Beatrice and Elowen, handsome ex-bandit Claire, and valiant leader Galwell the Great defended the realm from darkness. It's a tale beloved by all except the heroes. They haven't spoken in a decade, devastated by what their quest cost them. But when they all receive an invitation to the Queen of Mithria's wedding, it's a summons they can't refuse and a reunion for the ages. With Claire secretly not over his long ago fling with Beatrice, Beatrice fights fighting the guilt she feels over how everything ended, Elowen unprepared for the return of her ex-love, the cunning Vandra, and all of them lost without Galwell. And if reuniting with former friends and lovers wasn't perilous enough, dark forces from their past have also returned. Dusting off old weapons and old instincts, Beatrice, Claire, and Elowen will face undead nemesis, crystal caves, enchanted swords, coffee shops, games of magical truth or dare, and hardest of all, their past, rife with wounds never healed and romances never forgotten. This time around, will their story end in happily ever after? And it looks like it's being blurbed by cozy fantasy peoples. I would check it out. Sounds witty. That is all we have for fantasy and science fiction today. That was kind of annoying music. No, I have two at home. I have to finish first. Gotcha. Gotcha. Are you, uh, I know you're reading the J.D. Robin, not 
necessarily liking it. Is it the first one? Is it Naked in Death? Now remember, if you're not enjoying it, it just might not be the right time. You can always set it down. All righty. Well, that is all we have uh, for today. Tomorrow is Friday, Freeform Friday. We'll look at some things that are interesting that don't necessarily fall into the genres that we look at during the week. And I believe there are some more cozy mysteries uh, that are released on tomorrow as well. Um, cozy mysteries get released like throughout the week. So there are some that are actually out tomorrow, not on the Tuesday. Uh, again, I do have sprints tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they go for two and a half hours. Oh, pensions and demo think it passed the slang. The underlying story is good, so I continue. Oh, you, you jumped right in. You don't get some of the references, perhaps, of how Eve and Rourke got together, which happens in the first book. Oh, oh, oh. Well, um, so I hope to see you tonight uh, or maybe tomorrow. If I don't see you, have a very good Halloween, All Hallows Eve, Samhain, Day of the Dead, whatever it is that you are acknowledging. Um, we will have uh, sprints. We've got uh, Halloween Critters, at least three, and the ambiance will not be scary. It'll be cozy-ish. Um, I got to go get Keo some water because he's just hacking up a hairball or something here. Uh, have a good day. And as the banner says, hang on. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if he shows up. Uh, don't be a bookworm. Be a bookie monster. Om nom nom. Have a good day and God bless.